Hey guys, welcome back. I wanted to go over my experience with the JavaScript module in FreeCodeCamp, the algorithm and data structures. I finished it. I feel like it's a huge achievement for me. Uh, it took me a little over two months, uh, being pretty consistent with it every single day. And so, yeah, I thought I would just break down some of my thoughts. Just get that angle there. So yeah, first things first, I think it's great. I think it's awesome. It's an awesome course to do. And it teaches you a lot about how programs are structured, how to actually, you know, use JavaScript, which I had no idea about how to use before. And it gives you a really good idea about, you know, how to start with creating um, algorithms and uh, the different kind of data structures to use. Now, I will say this, there's a lot of content. There's a lot to cover. And if you're brand new to this, like how I am, then you're probably gonna start and just feel completely overwhelmed with it. I'm, you know, I don't wanna sugarcoat it. It can be quite a lot of information to take in. So when you start out and you're presented with the first program that you need to build, you're obviously presented with um, the instructions and you sort of go through them and you might finish the first lesson and be completely confused. Then the next lesson, you know, sort of uh, has very similar principles and very similar applications to the last one. And so you're kind of building on what you have learned in the previous project. Now, you know, while you're working through it, if you haven't got any experience with uh, data structures, or if you haven't got any experience with algorithms, then it is going to be confusing. My experience, anyway, you know, maybe you're a gifted person, maybe you've got a pretty, you know, kind of, pretty decent math background and some of these concepts, you know, are just easier for you. Uh, if not, if you're kind of a self-taught programmer like me, <laughs> then you might find this challenging. What I'm thinking now is after going through the entire course, like I've, I've done every single program, I've, uh, sorry, I've built every single application in the course, I've done, done it all, I've got the certificate and everything, is that I probably should have done a course, which I'm actually doing right now, I probably should have done a course on Udemy around data structures and algorithms first, just to understand what is being talked about, what, understand what's being discussed in FreeCodeCamp. Now, FreeCodeCamp, like I said, it's awesome. Like, if you don't want to get a course, just go through FreeCodeCamp. But I kind of feel like if you want to, st if you want to stay on track, if you want to understand what the instructions are. I would probably recommend just getting a course on Udemy on data structures and algorithms. And you know, you don't have to go through the entire course, but maybe just go through a few hours of the course just to get a bit of a refresher or just to build some kind of base level understanding of what you are actually looking at on FreeCodeCamp. That would be the advice that I would give myself before starting the data structures and algorithms course on FreeCodeCamp because now I'm doing a course on, on Udemy, a JavaScript, data, uh, a JavaScript data structures and algorithms course, and things are starting to click a little bit more. It's like a chicken before the egg kind of deal, you know, is, is it worth kind of doing the work and then going back and looking at a course, or is it worth doing the course and then, you know, uh, going back and doing the free code kind of stuff. For me, this is what I'm sort of suggesting that possibly I should have done the course before I, I, I dived into to the JavaScript data structures because it just, you know, it, things start to make, make a little bit more sense. In terms of like doing the course and how I finished it, I worked on it pretty much every single day. I actually, I don't think there was a day that I missed that I wasn't on free code camp. I worked on it every single day. How was I able to do that? Well, you know, every day you're not gonna be motivated to do it. That's just like plain and simple, you're not gonna be motivated to do it. But I started to really think about how I was gonna, going to approach this. And really, you know, with other things that I've done in life, like I took up running pretty seriously uh, about five or six years ago. I was never a runner. My background is more in kind of like gym, sort of CrossFit style, sort of, you know, training. I used to really do a lot of that back in the day. And so as a cultural thing in the kind of uh, CrossFit community, people just hate running. And so I kind of wore that label for a while that I hated to run. I'm gonna tie this into coding, uh, so, so just give me a second. So anyway, I decided I wanted to take up running and I would run, you know, for 20 minutes on the treadmill sometimes and I'd just, you know, I, I'd feel exhausted but I always felt like I got a really good workout in. And so I gave myself these kind of small goals to achieve, you know, 20 minutes, 15 minutes here. And, you know, over time you get 
better and better at running. You know, you're able to stretch that 30 minutes for an extra 40 minutes. And then next minute you're like, oh, okay, well, why not stretch it to 45 minutes? And you can kind of keep building and building and building from there. So I have this pattern in my head for how I got better at running. Now, I'm not, you know, <laughs> I'm not some crazy marathon runner, but I can, I, I'm a pretty decent runner now. Like I can run for a fair amount of distance, you know, over a week, I'd probably go for about four, sometimes five runs and I can, you know, easily do 10K now. And this is something that even when I'm doing it, even when I'm in the middle of running now and, you know, I'm sort of, you know, I mean, I'm in the pace, I'm, I'm keeping up a really good cadence. I kind of have to pinch myself and be like, oh, wow, you're actually running. You know, you're actually doing this thing that you've always kind of shunned away and you've said that this is not something that you would ever be good at and you're actually doing it. Anyway, the point I'm trying to make is that setting yourself little actions at the beginning to do every single day can lead to higher levels of action further down the road. So what I mean by this is I would start by working on free co-camp for only, let's say I had, I had 15 minutes, 20 minutes, and I would sit down and just work on free code camp. Now I should preface this by saying that I have finished the HTML CSS course on free code camp before I started the JavaScript course. So I had already built momentum from that course. My whole plan was sit down 10 to 15 minutes every single day to work on at least a little bit of code. And so I started doing that every single day, you know, for 15 to 20 minutes, uh, sorry, 10 to 15 minutes is working on a bit of code. And obviously when you sit down and you start coding, like 10 minutes, it just goes like that. It just goes really, really quickly. And I would then just be able to commit more time, you know, over time as I was sort of uh, doing more code, doing more problems or doing more actual, you know, building of these little applications, I could sit down for longer periods of time and keep coding and keep coding and keep coding, especially when you start to grasp some of the concepts as well. HTML, CSS is definitely a lot easier to get your head around than JavaScript. So I think building that momentum from that, that course was really helpful when I moved into my JavaScript course. So anyway, that's the progression that I took. I started with just 10 to 15 minutes and then obviously it moved up to you know 20 minutes and then some days it was an hour at the beginning. And then other days I was able to sit down there for two, three hours. Obviously I've uploaded coding sessions of me on the JavaScript course on this channel as well. So that's my recommendation. If you're planning on, you know, doing this course is maybe take it like 10 to 15 minutes at a time, you know, the first week, just set every single day and just do that. And by the way, just because you do some days where you've like coded for like two, three, four, five hours, it doesn't mean that the next day you need to code for five hours. You can go back to it and just do 15 minutes if that's all that you can do for the day. And so, you know, first thing in the morning, I would just wake up and just maybe just do, you know, 10 minutes and then that'll be it for the entire day. At least I got my, my coding in for the day, you know, and that's how I would sort of chip away at it. And that's what I recommend for people to do. If you have started the JavaScript course and you've kind of struggled to get through it, you've don't, gone through maybe one of the projects or two of the projects and you've kind of put it aside, maybe you've approached it in a way that you were too overwhelmed and you thought, that's it, I gotta do one every single day. And that's just not how it's gonna work, especially with some of the larger applications that you're building, you're not gonna be able to finish it in the day. You are gonna get frustrated with it because there's gonna be some questions that you come up to that obviously you don't know the syntax just yet, you don't understand the logic just yet, and you're gonna be like, oh my gosh, I don't know how to do this, and you're just gonna be sitting in front of a screen, or Googling like crazy, searching for different things, and you're gonna be demotivated to come back to it the next day because you feel like you've wasted a lot of time and you haven't done anything. So my whole approach is that even if there's days that you don't even know what you're doing, just come back to it and read it a little bit, do some more research. And then if you haven't figured it out, just stop, like, you know, completely stop and then come back the next day and then come back the next day and things will start to click. Okay, so let's talk about some of the key takeaways from the course. Before you start any project in Free Code Camp, I would suggest to get a really good understanding about what you're actually building. You know, regrettably, sometimes I would start a project and I'd just be sort of coding along and following the instructions and I had really no idea what I was creating. So I would suggest to really take stock of what you're doing and be a little bit more kind of aware of what you're actually coding, like what section of the program that you're coding at the moment. Like if you're creating a function, what does this specific function do? You know, if you're calling a variable, you know, where are you calling it from within your, you know, if you're grabbing it from 
the HTML, like what tag are you grabbing it from, what class are you grabbing it from, like just be a little bit more conscious about what you're actually doing and every step that you're taking. I feel that your learning process or your learning experience will be like heightened because if you're just kind of working through these problems and all you're doing is just reading, you know, the instruction and then you're just like looking at the example and you're just trying to sort of copy the example out. Like, yes, obviously you're going to do that at certain times, but I think it's important to understand why you're doing that and what that line of code is doing and how that's, you know, adding to the function that you're building or adding to the logic that you're building, because then you're going to start to fundamentally understand more about how these programs are actually built and the structure of the logic that you're using and the kind of you know algorithm that you're building and you're just going to be a lot more present with the project. I would say that unfortunately I started realizing that more towards the end of JavaScript that at the beginning I was kind of just following the instruction and just kind of writing out the code but I would say if I could go back around the first sort of projects I would really try to concentrate on what I'm actually doing and why I'm doing it. Now let's kind of talk about the big elephant in the room and that is AI. Did I use AI in Free Code Camp? Yes, I did. I used AI in Free Code Camp. Now, is that cheating? I don't know, probably. I want to be completely transparent, but I want to explain the way that I used AI. I didn't use AI to give me the complete solution. What I would do is I would kind of prompt uh, a, a chat GPT to help me to work through a particular problem you know, to go through uh, some logic line by line. You know, do I understand everything? No, I don't understand everything, you know, to be completely honest with you. I'm still learning this stuff and I think it's going to take, you know, a lot more practice to build the mental models and to, you know, to memorize some of the data structures for me to really, you know, be able to go and implement this on my own. Can I write a program by myself now? Yeah, I probably can write some basic programs by myself. I can probably build some basic web pages uh, you know, I, which I've started doing, you know, without a doubt, once, if you do, especially the HTML, CSS and the JavaScript course, you will be able to do it. Like it's almost a guarantee because there's so much content and there's so much information that even if you don't like, understand it as you're working through at the beginning, you will eventually start to grasp the concepts and you will start to uh, start to understand what you're implementing. So yeah, I guess I just want to be completely transparent with you guys and say that it is very tempting to try and get, you know, ChatGPT to work through the entire program or the entire problem for you, but as much as you can resist it. So I'm just trying to think when did I start sort of, because I started reducing when I was using ChatGPT a lot and I would say uh, definitely around the first kind of block of projects, I was using it a bit to help me to understand, you know, where I am, what I'm doing outside of the times that I was just kind of following the instructions and coding along without paying any attention. Uh, the days that I was like, no, nah, I need to understand this. I would, you know, take the problem and I would put it into ChatGPT and say, can you please explain what I'm doing here? And that was really helpful. That was extremely helpful. And what this also helps you to understand is how to think like a programmer, which, you know, for anybody starting out, I believe is probably the biggest hurdle to overcome because when you're faced with a problem, there are different ways of breaking down a problem. And the way that a programmer breaks down a problem is probably one of the best ways because it's like a logical way of breaking down a problem. You take something that's big and you, you know, break it up into smaller parts and then you break those up into smaller parts as well. And that is essentially, you know, how to think about writing, uh, writing programs. And that's the great thing about working through free code camp is that that's what you're doing. Essentially you're, you know, working on big problems and you're sort of breaking them down into smaller ones. And it teaches you how to think in that kind of structure. Like, you know, we need to first, create this particular function and this particular function is going to do this. Then we create this function and this function is going to do this. But for this function to work, you have to implement, you know, some of the logic from the previous function into this function. What I've learned is that, you know, if you're ever going to become a great programmer is that you need to learn how to write pseudocode. You need to learn how to write your program out in English first, and you need to write out what you want your program to do, what you don't want your program to do. You know, what are the potentials of what it could do, uh, which are called like your edge cases that you necessarily don't want it to do. And from there, you can build out the code of how you want your program to function. Anyway, I'm kind of rambling on, but I think that's key. 
to finishing this course is that you need to really just set some time, you know, to go through it, you know, create some small milestones at the beginning and don't overwhelm yourself. Like don't try to make it too difficult at the beginning. You know, don't put too much pressure on yourself. Just work away at it uh, the best you can, especially, you know, if you're a little bit older, if you've got a family, if you've got, you know, work commitments, whatever it is, it's going to be tough to juggle all that. It's mainly about just building the habit of doing it every single day. And if you can only do five to 10 minutes, then that five to 10 minutes is better than nothing. And you've kind of reinforced this habit while doing that as well. So anyway, to wrap up, uh, I think it's probably one of the most valuable things I've done in a long time. And if you're in the middle of it, you know, I, I encourage you to keep pushing forward with it. It will eventually come to a conclusion, believe it or not. And you know, it feels good. It feels good to finish the entire course, finish the entire um, program. You know, you feel like you've really, you've gone over a lot of different concepts. You've gone over a lot of different, especially JavaScript, you know, modules, and you have built a, a pretty good kind of foundation of understanding of JavaScript, especially the syntax and essentially how to build programs, which, you know, is really what we're all trying to do here. At the end of the day, if you want to be a programmer, you're going to have to know data structures and algorithms and I don't know any other place that's better to start than doing this course so I think that's it sorry if this wasn't like a really well structured video but I just wanted to get my some thoughts out hopefully you know this this helps you if you've got any questions about it feel free to let me know if you uh, like this video why not consider subscribing uh, to follow along with the journey and yeah I really appreciate the uh, the community that we're building here so that's it thanks a lot I'll see you soon